Sean, I've been obsessed with the nature of reality as you have been our, almost our entire sentient lives. And the way I like to start is to try to get my arms around the, the most fundamental things by asking the, I want every, I want to understand everything. I'm not sure how they all may fit together, but I want to have everything on the table so I know what I have to deal with. And so the question I, I like to ask are what are the most fundamental categories that we can classify reality in its total sense. So how do you start? Yeah, I mean, the only honest answer is I don't know yet, right? Uh, we only have our best guesses at the current moment. My best guess is that the universe is a quantum mechanical wave function and that that is all that exists. The wave function either is all there is at, at all or maybe there's a wave function evolving over time. And it's a little bit tricky because when we talk about quantum mechanical wave functions, someone's going to want to say a wave function of what? I, I talk about the wave function of an electron, the yeah, wave function yeah, yeah. of a chemical gas or whatever. My attitude is it's the other way around, that there is just a quantum mechanical wave function and we can talk about it in different ways. I think a lot of ideas from modern quantum gravity have really emphasized this. The same quantum thing can be sliced in different ways to give different physical objects. And sort of the art form of describing the world is looking at a quantum wave function and figuring out why is it useful to describe it as tables and chairs and people and planets. And, and so what does that literally mean, a, a quantum wave form of the universe? Is it one big thing that describes everything or is it one big thing that has little quantum wave forms that comes out of it? It's both at once. That's the miracle <laughs> kind of, of quantum mechanics. You know, the interesting thing about quantum mechanics is one of the things that makes it difficult to understand at first glance, there aren't separate quantum wave functions for different parts of the universe. Sometimes we talk as if there are, but it's mm. sloppy and, and, we're, and we're cheating. In classical mechanics, you have a, a baseball here, a baseball bat. You talk about the state of the baseball. You talk about the state of the bat. In quantum mechanics, there's not a wave function of the baseball and a wave function of the bat. There's a wave function for the baseball plus bat system. And in fact, there's only one wave function for the entire universe all at once. And then you say, well, but then I divide it up. I think of this big wave function for the universe as a combination of little systems, one for the baseball, one for the bat, one for the batter, etc. That's perfectly good. Someone else comes along and says, I want to divide it up a different way. And you say, why did you do it this way versus that way? The embarrassing truth is we don't know the answer to that question yet. But when you're doing that, are you doing that as a, as a form of, uh, of understanding it in a simplistic way? Or is that a, 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 an attempt to get what's really happening and people have different uh, views of what's really happening? Yeah, I think people do have different views. My view is that it's not a way of getting at what's really happening. In fact, what's really happening it's is this abstract mathematical thing, the wave function. We even have a name for where the wave function lives. It lives in a, a space called Hilbert, Hilbert space, <laughs> right? Named after the famous mathematician David Hilbert. Hilbert space is just a ginormous space of possible wave functions. Uh, you can define it many different ways. And the wave function just evolves in Hilbert space. Everything else is commentary. So where did this come from, this? waveform of the entire unit, this single entity which you believe in. Right. That uh, is not a good question to ask. Okay. So we, <laughs> I, w I won't ask that. I, I will come back to it because I like to find questions you can't answer. Right. So that's one. Well, I'll put on I my think that the point is that if you buy this story, that that's all that there is, is this wave function evolving in time, there's no extra explanatory level that says, well, why is there a wave function? Which is the time? typical answer that, that people give to, about God if, if you ask, where did God come from? So it's not exactly the same because they would go on to say that God is a necessary right, part of the universe. Right, 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 right. Whereas the fact that the universe is a wave function evolving in time is deeply contingent. I make no claims that it had to be that way. That's the way it is. Okay, you're saying that it is contingent or you're saying you don't know whether it's contingent or necessary? Uh, I, I can't imagine that it's necessary. You can't I could imagine. easily it. imagine other kinds of universes that are not that, and our universe okay. is well, this one. Let, let, let's explore that. In a multi-universe world, a multiverse, uh, with different kinds of multiverses, uh, is it the same wave function that encompasses the entire multiverse? Or are you eliminating the, 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 the wave function to each individual separate universe? Well, of course, again, the footnote, the, the, same? the footnote for every single question here is we don't know for sure. Yeah, but uh, in my view, it's one wave function for all the different parts of what we call the multiverse.
So it's one wave function. So it's not. So one just as your baseball bat and your ball exactly. is part of the one universe. So if you, if you have a multiverse, which you probably mm -hmm. believe in, it, it's one wave function. Already. So it, that becomes even more important to where it, where, <laughs> where did that come from? Well, but it also becomes important that we can't demand an answer to that question. We can look for an answer, okay. but we can't say I insist that there be okay. an answer. The answer okay. might be. Okay, That's and, how and it when is. people deal with God, most most people would then make God necessary, which eliminates the question of where right. God comes from. You don't do that with your wave function. I am at peace with the idea that, that it simply de is deeply contingent. Well, um, I I would find that hard to be at peace with as something that significant. It's a free country to yeah. to, <laughs> to to be a, a deeply contingent. Um, I think if there's any one lesson of quantum mechanics and modern physics, it's that we need to be open to weird, bizarre ways that the universe is from our individualistic perspective. And that's a tough thing to be. I mean, it's easy to say that as a sort of like, yes, we should be open to the universe. But we can't be so open that we don't learn anything, right? We come to the universe with preconceptions about how it probably is. Einstein famously uh, had trouble believing some of sure, the precepts sure, of quantum mechanics sure, for exactly that reason. Sure. So I, I understand why some people might simply be unsatisfied with a worldview that says the world ultimately simply is as a contingent fact. But I have learned to, you know, accept that. I think that's fine. I'd be happier if there were some ultimate, clean, and, and irresistible explanation for it. But I certainly don't think I have the you right don't, to You insist. don't demand it, because I'm, I'm in the, yeah. the state where I need to demand it. And I, I want to minimize the things I demand of the universe. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so all reality to you can be contingent. Yes. So it, it, it is entirely logical that there could have been absolutely nothing. That's right. And, and I think that it's a consistent point of view in the sense that when we talk about reasons and causes and explanations, these are, again, ancient words that we repurpose. And maybe they just don't apply in mm -hmm. modern quantum physics. Mm -hmm. And we can even understand why they do apply in our everyday world in a way that doesn't make them important far, parts of the fundamental architecture of reality. Now, in quantum mechanics, there are many equations, and it, it, and to me, as a non-expert, it looks very complicated. I mean, yep. I read a few books, a theoretical right. minimum. I mean, it's, it's hard stuff. That's right. And there's yes. a lot of pieces to it. Yes. Uh, and maybe it's, uh, maybe there's a deeper theory that integrates them, but it's hard. So it's it's hard for me to imagine that something so complicated and so integrated is the the radically contingent totality of reality. Yep, I'm very sympathetic to that. And so <laughs> part of that is that you know we physicists would like to find a simpler, more beautiful underlying pattern that explains the sort of messiness of the pattern that we do observe. And that would be necessary at the ultimate. No, no, I, I no. would like that. Right. You, you don't you, care. Yeah, exactly. But, but, right. but I, I still think like that. we can still have that goal for a simpler sure, explanation, sure. but that simpler explanation just, would then just be what it is. And yeah. still be contingent right. in, in your view. It would have been different. I mean, the universe could be one-dimensional rather than three dimensions mm. of space. I don't see any reason why it couldn't.